this is where I live, right? Uh, this is 50 billion hectares of surface, and about 15% of that is land. In that, there is 4 billion hectares of forests. Contrary to what we usually think, the majority of the forest is actually on the temperate zone. This is 3 billion hectares, and just 1 billion hectare is actually on the tropics. But this area in the tropics is very important for many reasons, for the biodiversity and so on, but also because it holds 50% of the living biomass of, of the planet. We usually, actually we had 6 billion hectares originally, 2 billion more than what we have today. We lost these 2 billion hectares in the last 2,000 years. Half of that we lose in the temperate zone, and the other half in the tropics. The difference, we lost the 1 billion in the temperate zone in 2,000 years, but we lost the 1 billion hectares in the tropics in 100 years, in the last 100 years. So we lose half of the tropics in just uh, this, this small period of time. Brazil is important in this because Brazil has half of the tropical forests. 12% of the forests of the world are actually uh, in Brazil. Just, I think just Russia has more forests uh, than Brazil. And, um, and, and equally, we have also 12% of the world's um, fresh water. And it's not just a coincidence, there is some connections to that. And maybe the best way to show this connection is how the Amazon works. The Amazon is like a pump. It bombs through evapotranspiration 20 billion tons of water to the atmosphere every day. To have an idea, the Amazon River, which is the largest river in the world, puts in the ocean every day 70 billion tons, 17 billion tons. So the forest actually evaporates more water than the river itself is put on the, on the ocean. If, if we had to boil this water uh, to get the same effect, we would need the entire power generation of the world for six months to do the work of the forest in one day. That's the reason why 70% of the rain in our country comes from the forest, not from the ocean, different from many other parts of, of the world. So this connection is very, very, very important, and we are very dependent on, on that water. Although we have other biomas, I would just concentrate a little bit on, on the Amazon. It's a, it's a very large piece of forest. We could fit many countries, uh, you know, Swiss is uh, in this corner. Um, we still have 80%. <laughs> we still have 80% of the forest cover, but we lost 15% on the last 30 years. So it's it's going fast. If we look at the trends that was happening on the late um, 90s and uh, the beginning of the 2000s, you will see that the deforestation was growing. Oh, you could stay. It was supposed to have a kind of a sound effect to wake you up after the lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so by 2004, we have 2.7 million hectares of forest shutting down in the Amazon just in that, that year. That is twice the size of the forest that you have in, more than twice the size of the forest that we have in entire Switzerland, and two-thirds of the area of Switzerland, if you want to say so, just in one year. Um, so there was an immense uh, problem because we are basically shutting down the forest, which is the origin of our water. And water is something absolutely important, and we are learning that a lot in Brazil these days, where we have, I know that it's difficult to believe, but we are having shortage of water in Sao Paulo, in major metropolitan areas. We are still, I mean, we're discussing plans to evacuate some of the cities because of lack of water. So that's where we are now. But that's for another... Um, speech. Um, so in, uh, back in, uh, in 
2004, I, I just came to, after working many years on the, on the uh, civil society, creating different organizations and so on, it happens that I was working on the government. That was the beginning of the Lula uh, period uh, on the government. And um, we got these numbers that, uh, that came from the, the spatial agency saying that we have this um, high um, deforestation. And we thought, well, we need to organize ourselves to now fight this on a, on, on a, on a, on a clever way. And um, we had this opportunity of being the government, you have a lot of the tools for regulation and law enforcement and so on. Um, and we had a lot of the information and the, the contacts and the, um, uh, uh, the ability to work with a lot of the inno innovative uh, tools that were created in the civil society at that moment. So we put, a, we put out a plan uh, that involves the federal government, the state governments, the civil society, and the business leaders to tackle this from the different angles uh, all together uh, in, in the following years. I, I will not get to the, all the uh, 144 actions that were in, in that plan, uh, just half of that, but it was things like, you know, um, implementing a system that gives us information every month about what's going on in the, in the deforestation instead of every 18 months. So we could act as the things were, were happening. Um, uh, there was a lot of actions to apprehend um, uh, illegal uh, logs. It's just in the first five years was 1.4 million cubic meters. It's about 500,000 trucks of, of, of logs, if you want to make a, have this in, in a vision. Um, a lot of people were put in prison, that's you know, part of the, uh, of the, the hard stuff, putting, including a lot of public servants, um, doing to corruption, link it to, to um, deforestation. There was a, a lot of work also on the finance, how to cut the, the finance that goes to agriculture and, uh, and, and pasture uh, that were linked to de deforestation. Um, a, a series of works with business and round tables to um, transfer the responsibility over the chain of custody uh, on the product that comes from uh, areas that need clear cut and, and other things like that. Now, uh, also there was a, an immense crate of protected areas, like 50 million hectares of uh, new protected areas in six years. It's a, a size of Germany, uh, including the, the indigenous lands. Now, uh, we, you know, we have some, some success on that. In the following years, the deforestation was coming down. Um, uh, it was about 75% decline over this period. Um, school, um, if you compare to the average deforestation rate that we have on the period before, uh, we save about 10 million hectares, um, which is a pretty large area. And uh, it's very important we avoid the, the emission of 3 billion tons of CO2, which is considered by large the, the biggest contribution to reduce greenhouse gas emission today in, 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 any, in any form. Now, you may think that when you do this type of action, you actually create an economic problem, because there is many economic activities that are linked to the deforestation. But it, it's interesting to know that uh, during the period that deforestation was growing faster, the, the, the average economic growth of Brazil every year was 2.2%. And during the period that we actually have the most important decline, the economic growth was almost a double. So, empirically, we are learning that there is no, this connection is not there, it's not happening. Maybe in the future we will learn that this is the opposite. And there is many hypotheses for that. One of them is just because you increase governance. To decrease deforestation, we have to have better institutions, we have better relationship between the different sectors, regulations, and so on. So it tends also to have impacts on, on, on other areas. Um, based on this, on this effort, we could also create other mechanisms to multiply and to perpetuate those uh, efforts. One of them was this Amazon Fund, which is an innovative mechanism in which we uh, the government of Norway and uh, also um, Germany and some private companies, they put money on a fund uh, as far as we reduce the deforestation and reduce the emissions. So every time we show the results, we have the funds committed. So it's, it's kind of a inverting the process where normally you would have someone preparing a project um, to get the results and then uh, you, you have the funds to actually get the results. In this case, the incentive is get the results and you get the funds to continue to do it. More or less like buying organic bananas. No? So, um, 
So that's, that's cool. It's, uh, this mechanism is also being implemented now in Indonesia. Uh, there is another one in Peru, Guy Guyana, so kind of cool. Now, for the first time on the, the last decade, we actually declined the average deforestation per year in the world, comparing to um, uh, the, the whole last century when we start to make these measures. So it's coming down from losing 16 million hectares per year of forest cover to about 13 million hectares uh, per year. Very, very good. Now, 13 million hectares is a lot. Just in the Amazon, after all this decline on, on, the, on the deforestation, we are having 500,000 hectares of deforestation per year. This is about two soccer fields per minute. Still today. So we can't be even close to satisfied with that. So the work now is to guarantee that we go to halt or to cut by half the loss of forest cover by 2020, in the next five years globally. Uh, and in Brazil, we want to have this zero and get globally uh, eliminate the loss of forest cover by 2030. And there is a lot of efforts being done. Uh, one of them is the New York Declaration on Forest that we have last year, which is putting together business, civil society, and governments to achieve this goal globally by 2030. Now, when you work with uh, forests, it's very difficult to not get into the debate of climate. You, it, it happens for many reasons. First, because Forest is, is a real part of the problem. About 10% of the greenhouse gas emissions come from deforestation and burning of forests. But also forest is a, is a big part of the solution because forest is the only way we know to do large-scale sinking of carbon, to take it out the carbon from the atmosphere. But what is striking me, and you know, some years ago, that was something new for me, is that forest is also a victim of climate change. You know, in 2008, I went to visit uh, some forests in, in Canada, in British Columbia, and I met this uh, small animal, this five millimeters pine beetle, which has this uh, nice larva, which likes to eat trees. So what this animal does, is it, it eats the trees from inside and kills the tree, and the tree stays stand up. You know, what you see here is not like the fall, you know, because this is pine tree. Pine trees don't have that. <laughs> it's really dead trees. And we flew over millions and millions of hectares of dead trees. So it's billions of trees that are dead. And why it's happening now? Because this animal was there for, for, for ages. It's because the control of this insect was done by the cold winter. So if you have three weeks of very cold winter, you will kill those, uh, those insects, almost the entire population. Then when it comes the, the spring and the summer, they will come, come up again. Now, they don't have this very cold winter for the last 10 years. And this is an outbreak, and it's, it's killing millions and millions of trees. It's happened also with fires in, in Australia, in the US, in, in Russia, and it starts to help, happen in Brazil with the drought, in, the drought season in, uh, in Paris State and others. So I, I was thinking, maybe I'm doing all this work to save forests and to have that for the heritage, but also to save our service on the forest, but there is something much bigger that is coming after us that maybe my work is just like, you know, uh, try to dry a piece of ice. It's almost impossible, right? So um, I, I, at this point, I was the chief of forest service in Brazil. I dropped uh, my position and started to work entirely all my dedication to, to climate change and relationship with forest, but more focus on climate change to see how we can actually achieve this goal. And this is what I'm doing right now. I'm doing right now digging into that for the last five years uh, to find a way in which we can engage Brazil and other countries, um, especially the, 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 the new economies and the developing countries that will be the ones that will grow more the emissions in the, in the next years, to engage on a progressive thinking way of changing the way you, you, you evolve to leapfrog the, nest, the, 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 the big emissions and get to the low carbon economy pretty soon. No, pretty soon. <laughs> so, um, you know, we have the two degrees um, uh, go, and to get there, as we saw uh, Jeffrey Sachs speaking uh, this morning, we have a, a budget of 1,000 gigatons of CO2. This gives us an average of 11 gigatons per year. But the problem is, 
we are actually emitting 50 gigatons today in carbon equivalent, if you sum up carbon and, and, uh, and the other gases. And we are increasing that on a speed that maybe will be on 61 by uh, 2020 and so on and so on. So the challenge is to go down to close, something close to 10 gigatons by uh, 2050. This is considering that the population will grow from 7 to 9 billion, that there is 1 billion people today in the world that basically don't emit anything. So you have also to include all of them. And come down from an average emission that we have today in the world from seven tons per person per year, just to have an idea what is one ton. One ton is how much one car running 20 kilometers a day we will emit in one year. So seven tons is the average of the planet, like you have seven cars for each citizen. Just to have an idea how much we are emitting. We have to go down to one. That's our goal, that's how we, we have to move up very fast. Now, you, 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 we always make this question, can we make it? Can we come down to that? I don't think the question is, can we make it? The question is how we will make it, because we will have to make it anyway. Because otherwise, we will not be here to, to tell the story. So, in Brazil, 60% of the greenhouse gas emissions back in 2005 were deforestation. In the world today, about 60% of the greenhouse gas emissions come from energy. So the same way we find ways to put together civil society, government, different agencies to fight and to push down the main source of emission in Brazil, I think we can do the same thing for energy. And that's how I think we will get there uh, by 2050. So uh, to, f to, to end, uh, I was noting during the speech this morning that Actually, I was born in 72, when we have the Stockholm, the first you know, meeting on, on environment and development. In 92, I was 20 years old, and I went as a student, I went to participate on the, on the, on the Rio, Rio summit, when I learned for the first time all these gigantic problems that are beyond anything that I could understand, looking just at my uh, scale that I was working in, in Brazil. I'm 42 now, and I will be 78 in 2050. So my goal is that I want to look back in 2050 and say I was part of the generation that fixed it. I was not part of the generation that screwed up. So that's what I wish for all of us. Thank you.